Really good timing, Batman. <laughs> As they're like reaching for the stream deck. I hear, pipe it up, pipe it up. That was awesome. Uh, hello. Let me know if the delay is um, fixed on my voice. I spent a little bit of time before the show. It meant to come up about 15 minutes ago, but I wanted to make sure it was perfect. I had my other headphones on. I was fine tuning it. It should be very, very close to on time now. Um, I need to do one thing on my phone real fast, and I'm trying to sort it out quickly. I realized that I have a misplaced mod on one of my guys in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And it's going to make me effing crazy, unless I fix it right now. Um, today is Mosh's live. Uh, however, we're going to talk a little bit of tech today. Because Elgato released a bunch of new products today. Uh, we're going to talk about those in just a moment. I... Shoot. Uh, crap. I don't want who, whom, rather. Let's take it off this dude. All right. Yeah, I don't know why that I didn't uh, have this fixed already. It's absurd to. I feel bad for my uh, my dude that. What am I, what am I doing to this guy's statistics? Oh my god. I'm embarrassed for myself right now. It's disgusting. What the hell? What have I done? What have I done to my team? Ew. My god. I'm sorry. Two seconds. Um, I need to fix something. Anyways. So, the CES 2019 was today, this week. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, all that matters is that they released a bunch of new technology pieces today. And I'm talking about Elgato in specific. Um, I think that AMD is tomorrow or soon. Um... But the important part that we're going to talk about today is the Elgato releases. They had four releases today. We're going to talk about uh, which ones are good and which ones are pretty bad. We'll talk about that. Um, other things to talk about today. I'll talk a little bit about the idea of stream coaching. There's been so many freaking people online are doing the coaching thing or whatever. Um, I don't exclude myself from that. We do a tiny bit on this show in terms of reviews, answering questions. Um, but there are services out there which cost money and I want to make sure that at least you're knowledgeable about what you are paying for and what you should be looking for. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the business idea that I've been talking about for like a year. Um, talk about the upcoming show, the new, uh, or the anniversary show at the beginning of February. Oh, and I want to talk a little bit about, uh, MAGFest and how that went. Uh, I've been in touch with some developers today. So I want to um, to give that feedback to the community. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I can't even focus on this right now. It's disgusting. I can't even look at it. Um, I switched some of the sound levels. I got this thing lowered all the way down. And it's like you can still hear it. There we go. Better. Okay. Um, first things first, charity. You know what it is. Um, you can uh, contribute to that. You'll see the spam every 45 minutes or so. But it's a month-long campaign that we're doing with Child's Play. They actually retweeted our account today, which is really awesome. Um, the the CP charity, the actual charity of Child's Play, uh, retweeted our our um, our advertising. So that was really really fun. And I hear that a lot of people's shirts have shipped today. There's some limited edition shirts that are that are available. You can see them by doing exclamation point charity and find out more about that. Should we just start with Elgato? That's what I'm most hyped to talk about. Let's let's just start with Elgato. Okay. So today, Elgato... Uh, and by the way, we have a Wednesday tech show. That is being complicated this week because um, my good friend John, who plays on a dart team with my two cousins, has to travel for work this week. They need me to fill in for darts. That happens on Wednesday. I will not be here for a Wednesday tech show. We're going to do a little bit of tech today. I may put a show on Thursday to make up for Wednesday. We'll see. Until then, let's talk tech today. Look at that. Let's talk tech today. Alliteration. Learned that from Paw Patrol. If you guys don't know what that is, you uh, you don't have kids. <laughs> uh, what I do is every single time. 
Every single time. Let's go to the main screen. Oh, yeah, OBS isn't up. Dummy. There we go. Okay. So, what do we have? Elgato Twitter. They released four products today. There is one of which is very controversial, in my opinion. We're going to talk about that one last. Let's talk about the first of four. Um... Oh, we could just go to their website. Let me do that. There's a lot of talk on their Twitter right now. Um, so here's the uh, CS Innovations. These are the four release products. Number one is this Thunderbolt deck. Number two is uh, something called the Key Light. Number three is the SDK for, stream, uh, for the Stream Deck. And number four is a mirroring app called Screen Link. Key Light will be last. Let's go look at the um, this guy here, the uh, the Mac. I don't know what they have that under. The is it under the video capture. What do they have it under? Oh, the dock. Is that what they call it? They're gonna get sued. There's a mini dock. Oh man. This is the Thunderbolt Three Pro Dock. What does that mean? Um, it's basically a super dongle. For Mac users, um, if you know anything about new MacBooks, they do not have USB ports. They have USB-C ports. Um, I think they're also considered Thunderbolt ports. I don't technically know the difference. Should I look at the back of this thing? Yeah, it's yeah, they're USB-C. Anyways, I think Thunderbolt maybe transfers faster. Either way, all they have is those USB-C ports. So. Um, they you have to dongle everything into the phone they were the first phone which got rid of the uh headphone jack so they had a whole deal where you had to buy a dongle for it now all phones are doing it so i have some dongles on me actually i have a uh, usb c to 3.5 that i use for my telephone um this dock is kind of crazy it's basically a super dongle in that uh, if you were a MacBook Air user like this, I have one of these for work, by the way. It only has these USB-C ports, nothing else. doesn't have Ethernet, doesn't have nothing. The power is plugged in by one of the four USB-C ports that leaves three open. You want a mouse and a keyboard, boom, there goes two. You basically need a USB hub if you own one of those computers. I don't know how you get away with it without it. I don't know how how's a monitor plug in, I assume by the Thunderbolt or by a USB-C port. Now... They're releasing this guy. Now you can put a display port on there. You put a display port um, uh, input into your Thunder Port 3 dock. Headphones are here. I believe that's a standard 3.5. Yeah, look at 3.5, Jack. I thought they got rid of those. Oh, my God. I thought those didn't exist. You got a uh, SD port. You got a micro SD. Doesn't already exist. That's a good question. We're going to go find out in a minute. Um, a gigabit Ethernet port. Uh, because not all users want Wi-Fi. Basically, this is here because streamers are like, I'm not streaming over Wi-Fi, you idiots. Um, but then you got USB 3s and a headphone. Two headphone jacks. Okay. Let's see what it says. Let's see what they're. Let's see what they are promoting. Full speed charging, superior networking capability. Listen to those words. Superior networking capability guess what that means ethernet port i don't i don't understand gigabit is that superior it's been around forever um elgato thunderbolt 3 pro dock takes professional connectivity to a whole new level enjoy the extraordinary power of thunderbolt 3 via one cable one now you only have three left <laughs> and by the way this power port is for um is for this hub, by the way. You realize that. In order to charge your computer, you've still got to plug your power into the computer. I assume that you could do so through one of the two Thunderbolt 3 ports on this hub. But still, your power's still got to plug in here. Let's see what it says. Premium ports with unbeatable bandwidth. Huh? Impeccable dual display compatibility and remarkable audio performance. It's a front speaker out jack. I don't understand that. Full speed charging. Uh, we just covered that. Extraordinary power. One cable. 
Single screen or dual screens, the choice is yours. <laughs> With built-in display port, drive any monitor up to 4K resolution. And connect a second 4K screen to the other Thunderport. Thunderbolt port. Whether you're polishing high-resolution images, engineering intricate spreadsheets. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Did I actually write that? <laughs> I, uh, my spreadsheets are pretty complicated, so I get it. <laughs> Guys, if you want to do Excel, if you want to be a pro Microsoft Excel user, you got to have this doc. It's intricate engineering spreadsheets. Uh, it's okay. Actually, if they had switched the words to intricate engineering spreadsheets, I might be more interested than engineering intricate spreadsheets. <laughs> or perfecting your epic gameplay. Doubling your visual real estate is a breeze. Could you not take two monitors with USB-C outputs or Thunderbolt outputs and just plug them into the computer? Am I missing that? Is that not possible currently? Right? I mean, I'm assuming that you could take these two monitors and just plug them into two of the ports on your computer, right? Then have a power plug into another one and have a hub on the other one and have a mouse connected to it? Oh, does it? I don't I don't have my computers at work, so I don't... And why do all the pictures I see have the mini here? Is that a subliminal advertising they want to sell more of the mini stream decks? I noticed it on their, um, their ad today. There was one with a streamer or something was like, turn on the... the the new lights. Oh, it's for the key light. We'll watch it in a little bit. But um, you turn this on, and, and then you press your stream deck. And she was using one of the mini stream decks. I do not understand the use of the mini stream deck. I don't get it. I don't have one. Just guessing. Okay, we should probably take a look. <laughs> I don't understand this either. I've seen this deck several times. My friend uses one who works from home with a Mac. I don't get the sloped... Uh, like raised up thing. I guess maybe it saves saves dust space, but like typing, you know what I mean? I don't get that. Why not just leave it on the table and type on the keyboard? I don't. They must trying to push in inventory. Yeah, absolutely. I think they haven't sold enough of these baby stream decks, so they're trying to get everybody interested in them. I didn't understand when they first came out with them. They're thirty dollars less. No, it doesn't make any sense. One cable ultimate access. How many times are you gonna say one cable? Is that the that must be the branding? Okay. With two super speed type 3 USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabytes per second port. And two type A USB 3.1. Ah. Oh, that's on the front, the type A. Okay. Elgato Thunderbolt 3 Pro Dock has all your connectivity needs covered. Use the rear ports to connect high end accessories. That sounds like the dock wrote it. And get maximum transfer speeds out of your ultra-fast SSD drives. <laughs> I wish I could do their, their advertising. Do their voiceover for them. And use the two front-facing Type-A ports to easily access everyday essentials like USB flash drives. I gotta say... That if they're meaning to market this to streamers, which I believe they are because it is on the Elgato website. Elgato does not make things that are not for streamers. This dock has two Type 3s, or two Type Cs, two Thunderbolts, and two Type A's, USBs. Six total uh, USBs. And I know that most things aren't USB-C yet. For instance, your webcams... Your uh, microphone, if you don't use an XLR. Uh, headphones that use a USB um, or the the uh, 3.5. Uh, Stream Deck is USB uh, Type A. What else? Um, uh, keyboard, mouse. I think they're... <laughs> what the, the funniest part about this is only two USB Type A's. So what's going to happen? You're going to buy this thing and then have to plug in another USB Type A hub to it. Because there's only two. This is going to happen. I haven't even gotten to the funniest part of this whole spiel. I'm just sort of uh, 
um, berating this. I do like these headphones though. Are those what? Oh, those are Corsair headphones, of course. That's like the look of them. I don't necessarily love the. Did they scratch out the icon here? Oh. One cable ultimate audio. Oh God. No setup is complete without epic sound. Thanks to a maximum sample rate of 96 kilohertz. Uh, did I miss something? Is it 168 is what people kind of play with? Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong in saying that? <laughs> I'm trying to confirm it on Windows right now. I can't find it. There's no way. Is that for real? I, I I don't know how to operate Windows 10, I guess. I can't find the uh, page where it shows me the, the playback devices. I don't know why I can't find that right now. <laughs> There's no way. That's, that's a joke. Uh, sample size is 24 bits. Your high definition audio files play back crisp and true. And with a combined mic and audio, <laughs> 3.5 millimeter jack at the front. You know why they got to say it's crazy? Because it's a Mac user. So they're like, whoa, look at 3.5. <laughs> Plus an amplified stereo 3.5 millimeter jack at the rear. You can plug in your high fidelity headset without disconnecting your desktop speakers. Who still uses speakers? I don't. I haven't had speakers on my computer for like 10 years. All this and more with your Sound Blaster 32 compatible audio card. <laughs> Doesn't a Mac have 3.5? No, they don't have 3.5 ports. No. I'm 99% sure my computer... I'm just going to get it. I'm just going to get it. We'll just take a look right now. Wait, so is Mosh making fun of himself since he's a Mac owner? <laughs> um, the Mac is purchased by my work. I would never buy one of these. I would never suggest anyone buy one of these. Never. The price is absurd for what you get. It's goddamn absurd. You can get an Asus ROG. Half the price. So let's take a look at the sides of it. Oh, I'm sorry. It does have a 3.5. You're right. I'm sorry. I did not notice. 3.5 at the back. All the rest of these are USB-Cs. Or Thunderbolts or whatever. It does have one 3.5 jack. You're right. Why would you buy one of these, Garrett? Jesus. Um. Okay. But yeah, 96 kilohertz seems like... I'm pretty sure isn't the standard like 192 or 168 or something like that. Is USB-C and Thunderbolt the same? I think they're the same. Am I crazy in saying that? Let me see. Thunderbolt 3 defines a superset of capabilities that runs on USB-C. Let's see the picture. More speed, more pixels, more power. delivers the best USB-C. Yeah, that seems like a promotional image.
I, th I thought it was the same connection, but just transfer speed was different. But maybe there's something else. Thunderbolt defines superset of the capabilities of running USB-C. At 40 gigabytes is the fastest connection. By comparison, USB 3.1 delivers at 10 gigabytes. Okay, so it's faster. Hmm. Because Windows blows for loud development. That's true. Thunderbolt uses USB-C, yeah. And more audio bitrate up to 128 kilobytes. <laughs> uh, I what are you talking about, man? The maximum is 96. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not possible to be more than that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so these guys invented the 3.5, is what it sounds like. One cable ultimate readers featuring both SD and micro SD. We saw that. That was kind of neat. Um Back up your mobile data. Uploading files. Ooh, look at that. Interactive. Uh, Wi-Fi works wonders when you need freedom to work anywhere in the range. But when it comes to speed, latency, it has a gigabit Ethernet port. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. It's brand new. Gigabit. This is the first time it's ever been done. So, why didn't I get an alert for that? Why did I not get an alert for that? Garrett, thank you so much. Seven months, Jesus Christ, thank you. I don't know why I didn't get a sound for that. What's happening? Now I'm mad. Now I gotta find out what's going on. Why am I losing? Oh wait, am I muted? On the alerts. Didn't get alert because the audio got stuck in the wires. Need faster <laughs> wires. <laughs> I need this stream. I need this dock. <laughs> we gotta get it. Let me test it out real quick and see if uh, if I'm missing something. Huh. Uh, did my sound destroy itself? Let me find out. Anyways, uh, so this comes with the gigabit Ethernet cord which is a uh, port which is nice because the macbook pro does not have that i'm sure you'd have to buy a separate dongle for that this should be running over the regular oh wait a minute Hang on, I'm, I'm looking through something here. That's two. That's Streamlabs is nine. That's 12. What's seven, eight? If you guys didn't know, I got a lot of, uh, <laughs> I got a lot of buttons. I don't have anything on one. Let's try that. Connex. Okay, let's try it again. Sorry for the yells. That's why. Okay. I got it now. Sorry. No, it was muted. I must have clicked. Um, I think when I was flailing to find the sound settings real quick, I think I accidentally muted the uh, system sounds on Windows. So sorry, bud. That your uh, thing got muted. But thank you so much again for that resub. We'll play it again just in case. Oh, it's not working now. Oh, it's because I put it on a different one. One sec. What did I just have that on? I think I had it on regular speakers. Let's try again. Welcome to Hero okay. Squad. Okay. Sorry, Garrett. I love you. Thank you so much, Eurisa. Sorry that also took five minutes to sort out. All set now. Let's get back to it. Um, so ultimate networking. So it's kind of nice that it has an Ethernet port because otherwise you have to buy a separate dongle. So now you just need one for all your stuff. Super dongle. One cable ultimate convenience. A mere click in the menu bar away. 
The free Elgato Thunderbolt dock utility app eliminates the chore of ejecting external drives one by one. Let me ask you guys a question. Be honest with me. You're using a flash drive or something. You guys right click and go to eject. Take it out. Yeah. That's what I thought. Let's pull it out. It's a perfectly acceptable method. The pull out method. Also, I just saw Gary was going to sleep. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah. Good night. It's only like 70% of effective. <laughs> um, yeah, that's absurd that they even have that on there. Requirements. Well, you can use it on the Windows as well. Okay, well, it's a huge hub. You guys want to see the funniest part about this? Want to look at the funniest part? Let's look. Let me see if I can, f if they actually have it up. Because it, it, I, I'm, I'm skeptical that this is real. Oh my God, it's real. <laughs> Who in God's name is going to pay $350 for a USB hub? Who? Holy God. Some of their stuff is a little overpriced. That is insanity. That's insanity. What does the mini get you? A display port? An HDMI port? A single USB-A? An Ethernet jack? And that's it. Are you fucking kidding me? You get a DP, an HDMI, a Type A, and a gigabit Ethernet port. For $150? That shit comes standard on every fucking computer in the world. $150 extra. $350 for you want two extra ports. I, I, this is not real. This feels like an April Fool's joke. What's sad to say is that the standard edition might be the one that's actually even close to being worth it. Even close. $216. Holy shit, how would you... Please don't buy this. Please no one buy this. If you're going to buy this, send me an emergency DM and we'll chat. Because that is effing crazy. It's pantyhose in my cart. <laughs> awesome. We'll save those for later. That is... That's a scam. That's a straight-up scam. Yeah, totally. Let's look at uh, USB-C hubs. Let me just take a look. What's this guy doing? What's this here? Here we go. We got a HDMI... Look at this one. Ethernet port. Three Type A's, one HDMI. Looks like one USB C and some SD cards. How much? What's the price on this guy? It's a, I don't know. I don't know what brand this is. Totu. I never heard of it. Looks like it's got two less USB C drives and no headphones jack. Two less USB C's and one less headphone jack. Let's see the price. Sixty fucking dollars. Sixty. How in God's name could Elgato sell that garbage for three hundred and fifty dollars? This is the first link on Amazon. I didn't even I didn't even do a search. I just clicked on the first one. I gotta I gotta compare these. I gotta actually compare them. Hang on a second. We get we gotta bring them side by side. Let me take a look here. I know I'm like ruining any chance of like a sponsorship with Elgato right now. <laughs> That's okay. 
I don't want to. I can't lie. Like this is this is crazy talk. This is this is madness talking. Okay, let's take a look. Here. On this one, we have one cable to connect everything in your MacBook Pro. Okay, here's one cable. It's USB-C. Okay. USB-C. Yep. SD. We got three uh, USB Type A's. Okay. Two or 3.1. Dual displays up to 4K at smooth frame rate. Okay. And this one, you can get one display. Or if it's a Type C, you could probably get a second. Right? Because you could plug it into the Type-C, just like a Thunderbolt one. You wouldn't be able to get 4K through there, but you'd still be able to connect it if you had that connection that connection type. But you could get one, and then use your monitor as the other one. Oh my god, and they're showing it connected to a fucking Mac. Look at this. No big deal. Oh, the charge passes through. And it's... Oh! So you could charge, okay. So you can charge your MacBook with its charger through this hub. So it only uses up one port. I see we could do the same with the Elgato thing. You're paying 250 extra dollars. I'm sorry. Yeah, two, no. 300 extra dollars. 300 dollars for. Yeah, it's like. Three hundred extra dollars for headphone jacks and three extra USB C's while sacrificing one extra USB type A. Is that worth three hundred dollars? No. The answer is no. For three hundred dollars. I'm gonna keep saying that because that's how effing absurd it is three hundred dollars that's one fourth of a good laptop you're on your way to an asus rog strix or a zephyrus with that money that guaranteed got some more usb drives in this thing oh my god the star ratings, 3.5 stars with 81 reviews. I see what you're saying. Temporarily out of stock. I can't even understand how that's possible. That, that must be artificial. Um, they must have lowered, like only had 10 available or something to force that to make it look like a rare item. There's on uh, that. Don't, please, God. If you're even considering it, you send me a DM immediately, and I will talk you off the ledge. I'm going to take a picture of this here. <clears throat> Put this on. Uh... I'm not very good with uh, art postings, but this has got to go on there. This is uh, crazy talk. Uh, we're going to do a little live tweeting. <laughs> so if you guys want to go like it or retweet it, be my guest. This is a <laughs> new YouTube video title, Why You Shouldn't Buy the New Elgato Dock. Exactly. I know this is burning a bridge in such a way, but this is a customer concern at this point. Um, should I? Oh, hang on a second. Do I have anything... No, not really. Okay. Ah, uh, maybe. Hang on a second. Let me recut this. I just want to um, eliminate any chance of anything. Okay, here we go. That's uh, what? <laughs> okay. A little live tweeting while we're on the stream here, because this is a uh, this is nuts. Three hundred and fifty dollars. For three more USB USB C's, um, a display port, and one less. Oh, yeah. 3.5 millimeter headphones, 
jack and one less USB type A. So 300, <laughs> I should say this. So $300 more. <laughs> My friend got the new Razer, Nari haptic, whatever headset and the mic sounds awful, but Razer is suppressing that fact. There, I'm telling you, man, you gotta, it's, those, we, we talked about it uh, last week when we were talking about keyboards and how my love for DOS keyboard because it's a quality product. If you buy, don't buy that gamer stuff. I'm a gamer, I'm a streamer, and those are who market to us. Don't buy that half-baked crap that they sell. Buy a good quality headphone. Buy a good quality microphone. You don't see those guys pushing stuff down people's throats. They're not taking out ads in Game Informer. Or, is that even a magazine? It is magazine. Game Informer magazine, any of that stuff. Oh, hey, Lace. I'm sorry. I almost didn't see you in there. How you doing? Every review video ignores the mic or says it's good when it is in fact not. And they are sponsored clearly. Yeah, those those guys that get sponsored by that stuff and don't tell a real review are so frustrating to me. It's almost um, uh, like a um, predatory uh, advertising practice. It's so, it's so disgusting when they do that. Because they're just preying on children. You know what I mean? Like the guys that watch Ninja that, you know... The younger kids that want to get in the stream and make a ton of money. That's who they're that's who they're marketing to. So three hundred dollars more for three USB C's, a display port, three point five millimeter headphones jack, and one less USB type A. <laughs> uh, that that doesn't seem too worth it. completely burning this bridge right now. Um, it, it's like they're trying to like, this is the first product that's ever existed. I wonder if I should tag in Toto. Can I, is that a brand? Let me see what they have to say too. Cause they should be doing a, making a killing on marketing against that thing. It's the same freaking marketing plan. They just like stole it from this company. This outputs a 4K video. What? Uh, what company is this? Because I want to tag them. Totu. Are they on Twitter or something? Let's see. Totu. Um, hub. That's Amazon. Best USB C hub for the new laptop eBay, Wirecutter, Verge, Amazon, Ipple. Oh, here we go. So to the website. Is there a tweet? Wow, it's like the only company I've seen without a tweet symbol. Ipple? Tattoo Hub. I don't know. Uh, if they spent their ad money on the product, it'd probably sell better. But what do I know? Tag Corsair too. They own Elgato. Toto might send you one for free if you review their product. Oh, that's a good call. Oh yeah, Corsair owns them now, don't they? This is, it's predatory. It's crazy. Okay. And they can uh, have fun with that. Oh, well, it's Thunderbolt. It's not USB-C. Yeah, but for $300, you can sacrifice uh, a 20 gigabyte transfer. I mean, it's, I can't even with these guys. Okay. Uh, sorry, we got distracted there. So that was the first product, and that's an absurd product. So, so, so the point is, Welcome do not, back. do not buy that product. Nine months. Oh my God, we have a baby. <laughs> Hi, Abby. Thank you so much for that resub. It's all too expensive. Oh, we haven't even gotten to the lights yet, Abby. We're just talking about the very first thing. I just tweeted at him too. We'll see what's up. <laughs> so uh, I might have burned the bridge for the bar Elgato <laughs> business relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they will. 
All right, let's go on to the next one. So I said there was four products, right? That was the first one that they talked about today. That was the first one. I guess for the... The only thing I can say is I guess for the price of that, they're marketing to the right people. The um, Mac owners are generally okay with spending an absurd amount of money on dongles and shit that their laptop doesn't come with, which is absurd. Um, because I should be the type of person that's marketed to, because I buy tech shit all the time. But that's crazy. That's crazy. Let's go check out number two product. Should we keep it on theme of talking about the absurdity of the products? Let's talk about the key light. So we're talking about some of the good aspects of it, too. I'm not going to rag on this one as hard. Um, this is a new product called the key light. Okay? It is a light the end we'll look at the price tag at the end <laughs> um it, the light does have some cool people we'll watch the trailer together real quick actually it's kind of a neat trailer i, I don't mind the trailer do we recognize her by the way hi sp I thought that was Aisha for a minute, but it's not. That's not a bad video. It's kind of cool. I, I definitely thought that was a little Aisha the first time I saw it. But um, looking at it again, it's definitely not. Um, okay, so... They have a new product called the Key Light. They announced it today at CES. Let's take a look. Uh, so the light's pretty, looks pretty good here. I highly doubt it puts out a quality like that. That looks like 5,000 lumens there. We'll see in a second. Um, the one thing I do like about it is the slimness of it. You can see this guy, it looks like almost like in this picture, this kid is in like an attic room with like a vaulted ceiling or something, and it's coming in a little handy there. I will say that's a pretty good part. Uh, because my lights are great, but they're fucking huge. They're huge. They're like two by twos. Um, I like them a lot. They're just large, so you gotta have a lot of space. If you have a cramped space, this light's pretty sweet for a cramped space. What camera is this, by the way? Is that the A6000? Because that's the one I want. Um, is this the Elgato Capture software? I've never seen it, so it must be that. The one thing I would have a concern with is, can I only operate that from the Elgato capture software, can I only operate the... Anyways, the lights are controlled by this little control center. You can you can kind of see right here. You can basically uh, change these tuners or whatever, but guess what those faders are? They're just hue and brightness that you can adjust in your camera anyways. Anyone that's played around with their camera a little bit um, on the OBS software knows that you can go into the camera settings, go into configure uh, camera, and you can change your brightness, your contrast, your hue... Uh, there's color correction, there's saturation. Uh, doesn't matter. A slew of other things. That's the, what I th thought of when I first looked at this. And if you look at this control center, it's actually... I wonder if they're going to show it close up. They are. So there's brightness, and it looks like maybe that's contrast. I'm not sure what this menu does. Oh, this runs in your Windows. Uh, okay, so this is just another app you have to install on your computer. Let's go back up. Spotlight's on you. Quality lighting is the secret to making your camera feed shine. That's accurate. We've talked about that many times. From the way you smirk and celebrate to the way you focus and freak out. <laughs> Viewers want to see every expression in detail. After all, you're the star of the show. They subscribe to see you, and with the key light... They instantly know you're. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it seems like the free software is what you're actually praying for. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All I gotta say is at least uh, the kid is using the big, the full size stream deck. 
because as if you noticed it during that video, I was going like this because the mini stream deck is down there. They're definitely pushing that pretty hard right now. Um, I don't know if they're gonna talk about. It. We'll scroll down. Okay. I need a key. <laughs> I oh, I wish we could have the doc doing that. Remember what? I don't know if you're watching the doc on like. It was over the Christmas break, but he was doing this Fortnite thing where he kept like yelling at his imaginary mom to buy him all these Fortnite skins. It was very funny. Description is over the top. Like, I'm pro now, guys. No lace. Not until you get the cue. <laughs> oh, animation. Let's see. <gasps> it slides onto your desk, boys. <laughs> um, conventional studio lighting can clutter up your setup. Built from solid metal, Elgato Key Light eliminates this issue thanks to the streamlined profile that stays out of your way it doesn't even touch your floor plus it stands flush against your wall simply clamp the I'm not gonna make fun of that part uh, too much because that is actually a cool feature of the light yes they are expensive we're gonna get to that <laughs> from and hello um, I mean I think it's a good product but I haven't seen the price yet it's uh, you'll see uh, so the coolest part about this light is that it, it does have a clamp and it's super slim. I like that. I like that. Look how slim these lights are. That's pretty cool. Like I said, my lights are freaking enormous. They're two by two squares and the depth is probably like a foot, a foot and a half. They're big lights. I love the slim design. That's very cool. And the clamping is, I mean, you can get that with anything. I could put a clamp on mine. It might have the same pole structure, so... But it's it's a it's an efficient design and it's a thin light, which is very nice. Doesn't that look like Aisha a little bit when you scroll down? It does a little bit, right? Put soft boxes to shame. White soft boxes tend to make you sweat. I have two soft boxes on this wedding, and I'm wearing a collared shirt because I'm professional. Key light keeps heat impressively low despite its massive 2,500 lumen output. These lights are 5,500 lumens. Okay, these lamps that I have right now, 5,500 lumens. That's uh, bright brightness, doesn't matter. 80 premium OS RAM LEDs ensure extra bright illumination. You can dim down to a subtle glow. A color temperature range of 2,900 to 7,000K understand that too well i'm not going to pretend to be an expert on that hues from arctic blue through sunset amber and a silky smooth opal glass face guarantees balance glare free diffusion at the perfect beam angle it's good it's good words the control center i don't totally get uh why jump up to adjust settings only to return to a blown out image key light replaces hand <clears throat> hard to reach area not the word area is not even in that sentence key light replaces hard to reach knobs with a direct Wi-Fi connection to your PC do my lights need to be Wi-Fi <laughs> so you can kick back with the control center app tweak your lighting from the control of your mouse get real time on screen feedback and even sync as many key lights as you wish I'll say number two, that's a decent thing. I wouldn't mind changing my lights from where I'm sitting, but it's just a, like I reach out my hand. I don't, I don't even have lights. I'll gotta sponsor me. I'll say nice things. <laughs> Man, I'm always cold. I'll take the sweat. <laughs> I have an overhead light. I thought this said gluten free. I I read it the same way. I thought it said the same thing. I feel like they're in a zit commercial. Your face can be too, <laughs> too be silky smooth. <laughs> Just so you can buy the Elgato Stream Deck to control it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look at, again, the mini Stream Deck. This is the, we've seen this in every single ad so far today, mini Stream Deck. But look at the, the basic controls. It's brightness and hue. You get more control editing your video software from OBS, but I guess that's a little more in depth, maybe. I was gonna say, how did OBS come on? Lights, camera, action, all with a single tap. Stream Deck takes key light to the next level. Thanks to direct integrations, you can customize as you see fit, power up, adjust brightness, tweak, color, temperature, and more. 
You can even save different settings for instant access on the fly, and that's just the beginning because the Stream Deck new integrations are coming. We're going to talk about that next. That actually sounded pretty cool. Stop marketing this garbage mini deck. Ugh. Make a statement. Flawlessly design to beat the rising demands of video production. Key light sets the bar for high-end studio lighting. Extra bright yet super dimmable. Space saving and built to stand the test of time. Space saving, I'll give you. That's a cool design. That's a cool design. Spa um, app enabled and destined to evolve with you. Everything about the key light says you mean business. <laughs> it's almost like saying you're a pro. Um, okay. So what are the cool parts about it? It's super thin, which I really enjoy that space saving. Okay. Again, my lights are effing humongous. Anyone that has big lights knows. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And being able to control it from your Steam de Stream Deck is okay. How okay is it? What's it worth to you to be able to do that? Anyone have any thoughts? What you think that, that kind of thing might be worth to you? Being able to control your, your, your lights from your desk while you're sitting here. And having a thin light. Let me show you. A I'm going to bring up a comparison to my lights. And we can check out the uh, the difference in size as well. Okay. So I'm going to show you my lights. There's mine. Okay. 700 watt. These are, I think they're 5,000 lumens. Oh, 5,500. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 5,500 lumens. Um, they're big. That's It's no joke how big they are. They're huge. But they're nice. Uh, they're good lights. And you... You know, I can't control from my computer, though. Um, I get this whole set in this carrying bag for $75. And I don't believe this is the lowest it's ever been, either. I think that's it's been a little lower. Let me see. All time. Take out the used in the... No, we'll just leave Amazon. So, 67 Yeah, it's been a little bit lower. Looks like it's been... Yeah, 65 So, you get these $65. Being able to control the light might not be worth it, but gaining the title of a pro is... Instant partnership, Espy. <laughs> I would need like four of them damn things. With green screen, changes in lighting is bad, okay? <laughs> now let's take a look at what the key light is. So we've established that my lamps are quite a bit brighter, double the brightness, and um, and $75 carrying case, uh, but bigger. Take a look over here. Let's bring over this key light. Elgato key light. 200 dollars let me qualify that for you two hundred dollars for one light two hundred dollars for one goddamn light Anyone that has a green screen knows that you need at least two lights. You need one for the backfill. You need one kind of on you. I happen to have two off-center sort of half backfills, and I don't have a ring light. Um, I should probably fix that, but I like my two side lamps. Um, you kind of need to to eliminate that grainy stuff that happens behind you when you turn your uh, chair, and there goes a shadow on the green screen, and that gets a little grainy. Everyone knows those. Um, everyone has dealt with them in the past. Anyone in the stream knows that. So you need two lamps. So four hundred dollars for two lamps versus what again? Seventy-five dollars for two lamps. And by the way, the ones that I have here are not the cheapest. You can find cheaper than that. I think I, I think I might have gifted some to Kitty. I think she like on her birthday stream or something, and they were like fifty bucks for two lamps. Two hundred dollars. Now, I will admit that that slim form factor is pretty sexy. It's pretty cool. I like that. It's nice to be able to control them from your stream deck. Is it $400 nice? $400. Go get yourself. That's halfway, like I said, halfway to that Asus ROG Zephyrus. That he'd be gaming and streaming from the same laptop. <laughs> I guarantee someone already has something like this. Yeah. 
and at 2500 lumens it also seems crazy like that's such a low power output too i love this look at this they already got customer reviews that shit came out today this shit came out today oh this is for a green screen wait this can't be for the actual lights hang on a second No, nah, she's talking about the screen. Okay. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> That's for the lamps. Five star rating. Really? Really? Absolutely wonderful. Finally a green screen. Wait, why are we on the green screens? Did I click the wrong button? Why are there reviews for the green screens on the light? This is all for the Elgato green screen on the reviews. Is that a mistake? This is a mistake. <laughs> That's how Amazon works. Okay. They just find like a related product and put the reviews of that down there. Seems weird. Stop marketing the goddamn mini stream deck. Gross. It's just gross. Regular stream deck. Make a bigger one. I would buy the bigger one before I buy the smaller one. Um, yeah, I can't see this glare free without thinking gluten free every time I see it. Anyways, um, that's a cool box. <laughs> it's cool packaging. Please don't buy this. Jesus Christ. Elgato, this is embarrassing. I'm sorry. I love Elgato products. I love this. I love the Elgato green screen. I would love to be wider. If you guys would have announced, I'm talking directly to you, Elgato and Corsair. You should be ashamed of yourself. If you guys would have come out with one of those four products, canceled this goddamn lighting bullshit, and just made a pull up green screen that was two feet wider, the internet would have lit on fire with people trying to buy that. Could have sold that shit for $200, $250. People would have bought it. A little bit wider green screen, and people would have gone crazy. Instead, you're selling a $200 single lamp. The fuck? Hang on a second. Let me see, let me see something. You're kidding. Three. Three. LED standing lamps. Look at the brightness. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the color range. Thirty-eight hundred lumens. This is twenty-five hundred, so brighter. Looks like about the same size. Thin. And you get fucking three of them. Three. For two hundred and twenty nine dollars. Three. Not two hundred dollars for one. It's goddamn embarrassing. Now I'm getting mad. This is gross. That's that's predatory marketing to streamers. I'm sorry, so hi, I didn't see you. I've been angry at Elgato. Skinny bitch is always the most expensive. <laughs> um, my $40 snap-on light is better than that. I spent $2.50 on a floodlight that's on the floor behind me. I put in photo-friendly daylight in my overhead. Super cheap. Unbelievable. A set of three lamps. But, you know, they don't clamp on the top. Guarantee you can pull off this bottom part and clamp it. It's just goddamn embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. I bet I can get cheaper than that, too. 137 for two? At about the same output? Look how... I mean, that's pretty heavy duty. This is probably like serious studio lighting, too. YouTube studio photography and video shooting. 137 for two lamps? You can get one in the refractor box there. Three pack of Vilrocks, one ninety-seven, two exactly two hundred dollars. 
What was this one again? 199, 197, three lamps. Oh, I'm sorry, they come with clamps? And a carrying case. And a remote. You guys, it comes with a fucking remote. You don't need that garbage on your computer, you do it with a, with a remote. I bet it has a phone app. 197, brand new. Gets here by Thursday. Jesus fucking Christ. Smaller LED lights you could use an arm rig, or a rig and arm. I mean, it wouldn't be hard with some adjustment parts. Exactly. In front, but I'm gonna check out that clip in a second. Look at this. 197, 199. I'll take a picture of this one too. It's, it's gross, Elgato. Shit is gross. Be ashamed. I'm going to make a compilation of these pictures tonight. Let me save this one. Sorry, we're doing a little um, professional editing here. <laughs> Let's get the prices in here. Okay. There we are. Oh, I don't want that. Actually, I want to go down a little bit. See, I'll post this to Twitter a little bit later. See what this, what the fuck lights? <laughs> it's just you being disappointed. Okay, you're talking about my life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But gross, man, gross. It's uh, it's disgusting. I got. We gotta talk about something good because that's it's just depressing. Is this like a Corsair influence on Elgato? Is that what's happening? Like how Activision is ruining all Blizzard stuff? Is that what's happening? I'm here 30 seconds of Frumpy's making lewd joke. This is, this is Frump I'm talking about. <laughs> Hi, Kitty. Hopefully uh, Kitty Cat's okay. I saw you put something on um, Instagram and I didn't, uh, I didn't get a chance to, uh, to listen in, but hopefully everything's reasonable. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the last two products. Um, the first two are a, 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 a hilarious goddamn joke. And if you are thinking about buying either of these two products, the USB hub or this lamp, please telephone me immediately. Smoke signals, DMs, everything. Monster teas. I've smoked too much crack today. I'm thinking maybe I need to, to buy an Elgato key light. Can you please help me? I will direct you to the nearest methadone clinic and we'll get you clean I'll stay with you we got because we got we can't have this I need to be a pro <laughs> not that bad okay <laughs> there's there's cheaper uh, more profitable and 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 less soul-sucking ways to be a professional <laughs> oh man He's okay, a bit sick, but caught it super early. He's just cranky at me now, so it's fine. Oh, okay, good. That's excellent. Okay, so let's talk about the other products, and, and we can be a little more happy about them because I'm actually pretty pleased with the last two. Um, one is this screen link. Um, so this is pretty cool. This is capture... Wait a minute. Fuck. Here I was all excited, now I'm pissed again. Is this Apple only? Are you kidding me? It's just for iPad and, and iPhone. The worst day of my life. <sighs> iOS can only. Guess we'll just rewind the uh, rewind the sands of time. Um, so let me talk about some things. First of all, this is an app that mirrors your iPad or iPhone into, I assume, Elgato software. Which can be put into OBS. Yes, can be put in OBS. So fine, <clears throat> that's fine. We have seen a lot of this before. We have um, we've looked at things like uh, if uh, many of you were part of a, a community called the Twitch Kittens, there was a uh, campaign on there for a game called Temple Run Two, which is a mobile game, and there's a lot of emulators online. A lot of them run pretty choppy, pretty slow, unless you hardware accelerate. It's a complicated process. In order to get your um, 
your devices to mirror to a computer though there's a lot of different ways um there there's something called miracast which comes with a lot of windows laptops by default uh, i have never seen it come with a windows pc by default but if you have a windows laptop windows 10 at least you can type into your start menu miracast m-i-r-a-c-i-s-t and it'll tell you if it's active or not on your machine i'm not sure the qualifications or how to get it active or not active but um that will allow you to instantly mirror your i believe android devices to your computer you can also use google home i believe there's a way to do that um no that's what i use for reflector um we'll cover that in a second um there are products you can buy if you have an iphone you can use chromecast yeah thank you uh, if you have an iPhone, you can use something called Air Server, which actually Juice told me about it earlier. But you can get an app called Air Server and basically mirror your phone into your computer. Um, there's also a program called Reflector, which I use, and I like it a lot. Uh, I think it's a $15 cost, and you get um, unlimited use of it. Um, it basically reflects, it's called Reflector, and it reflects your, your mobile device onto your screen so you can capture it, just like you can capture anything else. Um, the cool thing about Reflector is that um, you can mirror, you can link multiple devices to it. So during the Temple Run 2 campaign, if you remember, my daughter was on the screen with me. And um, she was also playing Temple Run 2, but on her phone, and I was able to mirror both phones. So that's a kind of a cool aspect. If you have, like, a bunch of friends over playing a game together, you can sort of, um, you can uh, you can play together on the in-stream it. So <clears throat> it's pretty cool. How do you mirror Masha on my phone? Send you a DM, buddy. Send you a special picture. The, my, my special mirror picture um so let's let's go through this share <laughs> called it from those i didn't know you used reflector too front that's a really good program i've liked reflector for quite a while um games apps the camera wirelessly capture everything on your iphone and ipad to your computer instantly record or stream it all in stunning quality okay i mean a lot of this is business speak i know i'm laughing at like the you know the exhilarating, you know, and 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 crazy synergy or whatever, stupendous quality. Uh, those are it's buzzword speak for businesses, so I shouldn't be too harsh on them. Every business does it. Um, with ScreenLink plugin installed in your PC, your iPhone automatically appears as a source in leading apps like OBS Studio. Okay, cool. Um, you could also just desktop capture. Anyone that knows streaming software is not really that concerned about getting something that's on your computer to your OBS. It's a click. It's a source. You know, it takes five seconds. Never miss a premium Snapchat on stream. <laughs> yes. Also, premium Snapchat? Is that a thing? <laughs> is there a paid service on Snapchat? It's like the one app I don't understand. So that's crazy. <laughs> there is. Uh, mobilize your games. Whether you're building a barracks in Minecraft or battling for victory in Clash of the Clans, screen link make sharing your mobile gameplay a breeze the one thing i never liked about the mobile thing and i didn't like when i was doing the temple run 2 campaign and i don't like when i do the star wars one is when you're streaming you're sort of like looking down the whole time when you want to be looking at the camera so you're like all right now i'm doing you know what I mean? it's tough to do someone doesn't know his way around twitch thoughts <laughs> true true Augment your content from zapping zombies in your living room to taming dragons in your kitchen. Screen link gets you AR antics online for all to see. <laughs> Is that an app that comes built into the stream link? The screen link? Because it works wirelessly, you can enjoy total freedom of movement within your local network. So you can put a fucking dragon down. Like augmented reality has been a thing for 10 years, folks. What's this guy doing? Oh, damn. Now, this part of it, okay. You could also do the same with the reflector, but that part's okay. Try crafting, Mosh. I'm always looking down. That's true. But, I mean, then you're looking at something being built. Yeah, I guess maybe it's the same. Never done AR apps. They're lame, but I think they might be referring to Pokemon Go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that Logitech Cam worth it? With a Corsair logo on it? (laughs) 
No way. That is definitely a C920. That's absolutely a Logitech C920. Look at this one. That's not where the logo is on the camera. Logo's in the middle on the right. Not on the bottom right. Are they trying to insinuate that's a Corsair camera? <laughs> that's pretty funny. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> that does look like the Corsair logo, though. It could just be an unfortunate reflection of light because you can see the guy, the shadow of the guy moving when he gets up from the desk. <laughs> Logitech got you a lawsuit. <laughs> is the text in the bottom left? No, the text isn't even in the bottom left on the C920. I'm not sure about the C922. I think they look the same. Um, what's that little thing? Okay. Vlog live on the fly. See, I, I, I could see that being kind of interesting because you can walk around the house doing it, but there's other ways to do that. You can... You can get different pieces of software that are actually free uh, to, to mirror your, your cam as you walk around. You already have a PC and an iPhone or iPad. All you need to level up your mobile content is ScreenLink. So go ahead and get started for free, then upgrade to Pro for unlimited power. So you can try it for free for 15 minutes. That's pretty cool. Max bitrate of 16 megabits per second. Hmm. Yeah, it requires iOS. Okay. So, you can't use an Android on it. Um, the one thing I will say is that I like Reflector a lot. It's a software that lets me mirror. It's basically this. You can mirror your stuff up onto the screen um, in multiple devices of it. That costs $15, um, I believe. $10 is a pretty good price for this. This is not a bad deal. We kind of made fun of it a little bit because it's only for iPhones. But if you have an iPhone, you're not interested in downloading third-party apps, which I have done to test out a few, and I've done tours of the studio. This is not terrible. This is pretty good. For $10, you're not going to go wrong for $10, you know? So uh, let me just see. Let me just make sure that this is... Uh... Can I, like, go to the store myself from here and buy something? Hang on a second. First gen iPad Pro and tried testing stream capabilities. Could be a second, couple second lag, but about five minutes into it, it cut stream due to not enough bandwidth. The idea is great, especially if you stream a lot of phone games. Me personally, I was going to try to use it as a webcam replacement, and while it works, the delay makes it useless. Okay, so that's kind of an unfair review because you're going to have that with anything especially if you have a microphone that you're talking into you can't expect the camera to be kept at the same speed you have to do some delay stuff um, but that's with bringing any camera in this is a little bit of an unfair review um this isn't a this isn't a bad product in my opinion um we gave them a little bit of shit uh for all the stuff above but it's, it's not bad and if you have an i an iphone ten dollars i mean it's two coffees it's not. It's no big deal. This is this is one of the three product, four products that I would, that I that I would say uh, is pretty solid. I can't speak to the delay of it though. You'd have to test it out, and I don't have an iPhone. So if you're interested, the link is there. I'm not posting the link to that fucking key light bullshit or that hub because that's absurd. But um, that this is not this is not bad. And at ten dollars, you're not gonna you're not breaking the bank on it. Now if it, if if you log in, it's like ten dollars per month. Please log out and delete that app and possibly smash your phone to pieces because it has been infected by something. Do not pay $10 per month for that. At least not until there's an Android version and it streams with 4K or something. <laughs> um, let's check out the last one. Stream Deck Integration. Now, this one is the one I was kind of super interested in, so let's check that out. Oh, God. They, this is what I'm saying. God damn it. What the fuck? Look at this studio. Look at these kind of cool looking lights, but super overpriced. Got this badass DSLR camera. Got a cool mic. I'm not sure. Is that an AT2020 maybe? Uh, an upright thing. Got some kind of weird console. I mean, is that an Xbox? Uh, looking kind of sleek. 
Uh, and then they got this thin ass green screen of all this garbage that they created, this key light shit, this, oh, they actually got a real size stream deck here. I'm kind of impressed, but, um, this key light fucking garbage and, um, they got an Elgato card here. That's good, but they still keep the thin ass green screen. They could have thickened up that bitch and sold 3000 of them day one. Probably cost them nothing. A little bit extra fabric. Even just extend the green out to the edge, out to the edge of the, the things. Add another four inches on the on the end there. I would have paid another fifty dollars. Trying to sell me four hundred dollars for two lamps. Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at this integration stuff because this seemed pretty cool. So, <clears throat> it's so blue. Some kind of weird console. Was that Xbox? I don't. I don't play my console, but my Xbox doesn't look like that. Maybe that's a new Xbox. I don't know. Uh, thick green screen, please, for Mosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously, I want one to stretch across my goddamn room. <clears throat> that's a 1X? Okay. Uh, stream Deck hardware. Uh, stream Deck is USB peripheral. Uh, so, 50 to, please don't buy this mini piece of shit. Buy the real one. Um, stream Deck software. The Stream Deck application is easy and intuitive to use. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the, this is the software of it. The SDK. Documentation we describe how you can create a custom action to extend the functionality of Stream Deck application. Your actions will appear in the right panel. Okay, yeah, so this is pretty cool. Um, this is an SDK, so it's basically open platform. So SDK is software development kit, and a lot of um, companies will do it when they want to. It's basically like a modding environment. If you've played uh, different games, they talk about modding the game. You play GTA or Skyrim or something. You know what modders can do with the game that are pretty dedicated to it. They can make it crazy. Um it's like that. So basically, people can mod your Stream Deck. And what you're going to see happen is developers are going to come in here and create some really awesome uh, other plugins for your Stream Deck software. So um, we have a whole list. This is the stuff that all comes with it. YouTube, there's all these like little plugins for it. These things at the bottom, I think, are the modded ones. You can add this. Little, they got a custom clock on here. They're going to they're gonna have a ton of stuff, I bet. I guarantee they're gonna have like DMs or something on here, so you can a flash when you get a DM on on uh, Twitch or on Twitter or something, so you can see stuff in real time. Guarantee that stuff is happening. I bet you that uh, another cool um, cool add-on might be like um, if it could track your latest tweet number of retweets or something, you could track them live on your things. So you can tell because I've seen some uh, broadcasters be like, "Hey, everybody, go retweet my latest." Uh, live post or something like that, or go like it or comment on it. You could keep track of that. Let's hit 10,000 views or you know whatever. But keep track of that stuff on here live on the stream deck. Um, just some small things like that. But I bet you're going to see some pretty cool ideas come out of this. And um, and uh, so I, they're going to be open platform. I bet so you'll see a lot of cool stuff coming up um, online just using this SDK. So it'd be pretty sweet. JavaScript, C++, and Objective C. That's pretty neat. Um, I'm doing some more coding at work now, so I might actually take a look at this. It's pretty cool, though. So they're going to add in a bunch of... Um... Yeah, cool. So this it's just basically code links into the software of how to develop this stuff. Really cool that they did this. And and sometimes it's... Oh, they list all the... Okay, so it's all the commands and stuff for it. But um, a lot of times what happens is when they, when they release this kind of stuff, it's because they're done developing for it. They're, they just said, we've made a, the base product. You guys take it to wherever you want to go. So you're going to see a lot of third-party stuff come in here. Pretty neat. I'd like to see if someone could create something where it would link two stream decks together. If they could recognize each other through the SDK and have like some kind of wave effect through the stream decks or something. That might be kind of cool. Um, anyways. Uh, there's not much to say about this. There's not like a price tag on it because it's free, but we're going to see a lot of production out of this. I guarantee it. Oh, God. Is there a store? Oh, there's a store built in. Yeah, yeah. L let me see. Maybe that's new. Maybe there's a new uh, release for it or something. I don't know where the Stream Deck store is. What is that? I've never even heard of that. Yeah, I'm missing something. 
Or do they mean store like a storage and not like a store to buy stuff? Hmm. Uh, anyways, that, that will be good for everyone. An open SDK is always good for, for the general people in the world. Because um, you'll see a lot of customization and, and some new interactions. So we'll look forward to that. And if I see any awesome ones, we'll definitely talk about it on the show when they come up. So that was uh, Stream Decks. I'm sorry, Elgato's uh, CES innovations today. Two pieces of hot garbage, one okay uh, item, and some cool future use in the, uh, the Stream Deck SDK becoming an open source thing. No extended green screen as I had hoped. Uh, no 4K USB I saw. <clears throat> right, some people were hoping that um, the USB HD 60s would get a counterpart that was 4K. I was seeing that online a little bit, and no evidence of that. Cam Link still exists, which I want for a DSLR that's coming up. Uh, mini Stream Deck, Jesus Christ! I was thinking they might have a bigger Stream Deck actually, like do a deluxe one or something. Add like another uh, row and another column of uh, of. Of buttons. I still need to get into mine some more. Mine's not super uh, in depth. These guys have all these kind of icons on here. I don't have that stuff. Mine's are all stock. Key light. Ugh. Bleh. Green screen. Make a fat one. Come on. And these docks are fucking the most absurd thing in the world. <clears throat> so, um, I think what's on the deck for uh, CES tomorrow? Isn't um, isn't AMD tomorrow? To have a uh, schedule. Let's see what's on for tomorrow. We can see what um, if we're gonna have any news coming up. Oh, these are all these are all chats. Arcval Technologies. I guess the, it's going to list a thousand talks, so it's stupid for me to scroll through it. But I was I was almost sure that AMD was tomorrow. Uh, CES Tuesday. Uh, AMD. AMD rolls out raft ahead of CSS or CES. AMD at CES. Okay, here we go. January 8th. Yeah, tomorrow AMD will be on the stage. So we might see some new processing stuff, which will be very exciting, especially for people thinking about upgrading. Um, it might be a good time to get some of the current Ryzen stuff because there's an anticipation that there'll be a new architecture coming. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. So one of the other things we want to talk about was, um, oh, I want to mention the Wednesday show. So usually we do the tech show on Wednesday, as you all know. Hey, Bugs. What's up, bud? Uh, the uh, Wednesday show is canceled for this week because I have to fill in for a dart league. My uh, friend's going out of town in business. My cousins need me to fill in. So I'll be there uh, in the evening kicking ass at darts. And um, I think we might put on a Thursday show instead of Wednesday this week. So there might be a little more tech talk to do on uh, on Wednesday. We'll cope with some topics. There's been a lot of people asking about PC builds. So we might do a little build on stream. And uh, we can talk a little bit about that and why you should go with certain things. Maybe how to go about putting together a, a, nice, uh, a nice price point for a build. All the parts are in the connector. Yes, nice. Um, <clears throat> so today I was looking forward to um, I was looking for the exact date that I started streaming so when I was researching how to find your first stream ever all the websites are like oh just go to um, go to social blade or go to, or no go to uh, twitch and just scroll back you can scroll back in your dashboard it only goes back two years <laughs> so mine is not on there but um, social blade has me uh, getting like a couple thousand views on one of my videos at the beginning of February in 2014. 
and I have my first follower listed on there. Actually, the first two followers are February 1st, 2014. Um, so we're going to call it February 1st as the first day. Um, that is actually when I have my the first recording of myself streaming. I don't think I've ever showed it live. But we're going to take a look at that on the five-year anniversary. Uh, it's pretty funny. I watched a little bit of it today. But it's from February 1st, 2014. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so when we're looking at the calendar here, February 1st is on a Friday. That could be the show. Um, for a five-year anniversary show, we'll probably do a long stream like we did on the birthday. It's possible 12 hours. I don't, I don't know about 24 hours. Let's see about that. That requires some family coordination. <laughs> um, but uh, it'll definitely be a 12-hour deal at least. And, uh, and that'll be the day with all the giveaway stuff, which I promised you guys I would list out, and I did not. I will make that a point to do uh, tomorrow morning and working on lunch. And I'll get that taken care of. We'll list all the gear. It's going to go up in the Discord for Hero Squad. So I'm going to list everything that's going to be available for the giveaway. Then you guys can sort of, um, you know, create your own game plan on how to save your tickets and things. Uh, because as the birthday stream went, uh, entering the giveaway for cost tickets. And, uh, yeah, you, those are points. Get your tickets. Uh, you get those by doing different shit on the uh, on the show, watching and, and all that other stuff. Uh, so, well, tentatively February first, I'll create a flyer uh, for that uh, that I'll put out on the social media and things. We're not going to list all the giveaway stuff anywhere else except on this stream or in the Discord. I did post some rough pictures of it, but we're not going to post any kind of information, or anything like that about it. Um, you know, what type of stuff is 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 in list format on on socials. That'll be for the Discord and you guys. All the points. Um, what else do we get? Oh, so let's talk a little bit about coaching. <laughs> I put a question to the bar today about coaching. And, um, the I mean, the, the conversation was great, as it always is at the bar, by the way. And, uh, and you can find those communities uh, at these two links. The first of those is Hero Squad. This is the channel's uh, Discord community. The bar is a community that I'm a part of. <clears throat> and uh, we do a lot of cool stuff there, including the charity that you've, they're seeing posted here. You can see that by exclamation point charity as well. But um, in the bar, we have discussions about streaming and stream theory and things uh, uh, throughout the week. And today we talked a little bit about coaching because I've been seeing a, a big influx of people. Uh, um, uh, founder, yeah. <laughs> I'm also a part of it, you know. Um, but there's more and more people talking about coaching and, and offering coaching advice and things. And it's a little bit cringy in some aspects. We talk about coaching here. Uh, we do a little bit of what you could call coaching on, uh, on Mondays. There is a tier three uh, sort of bonus if, if for a tier three subs uh, for like more of a personalized coaching session. And I, I just call it coaching as sort of a, um, a blanket um, adjective for it or description of it but it's more like um, it's specifically setting goals uh, um, um, for you at, at that point so, uh, so so basically what happened a couple months ago is there's why are we in this screen Jesus Christ we're chatting let's go to chat screen <laughs> you don't want to see me blown up of course you do So a couple months ago, there's a broadcaster named Lyric, who might be like in the top five broadcasters in the world and has been for a while. Um, no matter what you think of him in his personal broadcast style, he's very popular. Um, so he also uh, gets the um, the bonus or negative of when he tweets something, it's seen by like millions and millions of people. So he tweeted something one day that was essentially, uh, stream coaching is a joke and you don't need it. Just figure it out. Um, <clears throat> it's, oh, Shem, what's up, buddy? Um, <laughs> no, uh, but it, what happened from that was a lot of people started whining and complaining. Uh, coaching is good. Coaching is bad. You know, irrelevant of what you think about it. This is, was the conversation that started. So I put the question out today. On, uh, on what you think of a, of a service 
that um, and I, I sort of pre- uh, couched it as sort of like an assistantship or managerial service, not necessarily as coaching. The conversation sort of circled and, and became about coaching, which is completely fine. I love when the conversation is organic uh, in the bar. But um, the idea is this. Despite what you think of coaching, and, and I do understand I'll, there was a lot of great conversation today. Um, if you just start streaming, do you really need to? Do you really need a coach? You need to figure that stuff out on your own. I think yes. Everyone needs to, f- you know. They always, you know, you gotta. What is it? Fall off your bike when you're learning to ride, or you don't really learn to ride, or something like that. Got to crawl before you run, walk before you run. It doesn't matter. Um, but learning from your own mistakes is great. If you can learn from other people's mistakes, it's good too. But um, there's a lot of get rich quick schemes in every business, which is uh, sort of what we touched on a little bit in the conversation, where every person in the world will be, hey, you can become the next superstar by wearing, uh, you know, remember the pump shoes, what are they called? Um, like Nike pumps or something like that. Those pump shoes make you jump higher, dunk the ball, you're an NBA superstar now. Same thing with Gatorade, same thing, all this stuff. You wear these different shoes, you're the, you're the superstar. Um, colleges do it. Go to this college, you'll you're, you'll be uh, you know you go to MIT, you're automatically a rocket scientist. It's not always the case, you know. Um, but uh, the stream coaching idea is the same way. There's a lot of people that will say, oh, if you come here and give me two hundred dollars a month, you're gonna be the next big thing on Twitch. I'll teach you. I'll give you all the tools you need to to get there. Now they might not necessarily say that you'll be a partner on. Twitch, if you give me two hundred dollars a month, I'll get you there. They might not necessarily say that, but um, that's not to say that it's not implied from people that don't know better. This is what we were talking about earlier with Elgato, and they're two garbage pieces of shit products that they're marketing right now. It's a predatory business practice to prey on people that don't know better and take their money. It's it's. That's how corporations work. I understand that. That's called capitalism, and I understand that. It doesn't make it less shitty. (laughs) So um, I saw an ad the other day for stream coaching that was $250 a month. $250 a month. Um, There is several other services that range anywhere from $50 a month to $150 a month. Some of those services are one-on-one services where you talk to someone and uh, describe maybe your goals. I, I don't know. I haven't looked into exactly what it is. But um, it's described as stream coaching. So you can assume that there'll be some tips, some advice, uh, maybe some uh, secondary opinions on uh, what your stream looks like, what games you should play, uh, times you stream, things like that. Uh, for at least fifty dollars a month is the lowest I've seen. This fifty dollars a month, I've seen a very yeah. You know, I know of streamers that have services for hundreds of dollars a month. Uh, that isn't one on one, which is to me that's crazy. I mean, you pay hundred dollars a month. I'm not getting one on one service. <laughs> would you have a personal trainer that costs two hundred dollars a month and you didn't get to see that person? You got write ups. No, you wouldn't do that. I love actual conversations like this. I love you, Shem. You never know what it takes to be a pro. <laughs> Pretty good button. You see, you bought an Apple Watch too? What? I didn't know that, bugs. Nice. To be a pro, you have to buy a key light. Where's my $250? <laughs> Could you pay much for a skincare routine coaching? Uh, that's not possible. That's uh, that's proprietary, and uh, it's patented, so I can't. That's $10,000. We're on a different scale for that. Um, But, so, um, I'm not saying that people can't use coaching, because everybody can use coaching. However, there's a lot of good free resources. Um, you can go there. Our friends Ashna Christ, who uh, does many tips for free on YouTube, uh, there's a lot of tips on her show. She has streaming 101 um, videos out there. She also has a paid service, uh, but regardless of that, she has a free service. You can learn a lot of stuff from it. Um, any of her shows are great. Her Discord is great. Um, you can learn some stuff from this show. On Mondays, we do sometimes content reviews. We do a tech show. We talk about tech stuff, and we're happy to answer any questions on the show. Same thing as on the Discord. That's free. Um, I just get so weary when I see all these people on Twitter. I, I swear to God, in the last week, I thought I saw three different broadcasters. Um, two of them are partners. One of them is affiliate. 
and um they have never and i've been following them for months months and months and months and i have never heard them ever say one time anything about coaching nothing about reviews nothing about um answering questions about streaming nothing not a single word for months in the last week i swear to god all three of them are talking about it now now it's come join the channel we're answering questions we're doing coaching live we're going to review your channels now the first person i know that did that was um and i'm not a big twitch reader. i don't see every channel on twitch but i know that ash has done it for quite a while um i'm sure that other channels have done it before i think bro man has done it at one point but um <laughs> it's like these people have never done that they've only played their single game and now all of a sudden they're a stream coach um it's just it's terrifying they're trying to make that money that's exactly what i'm talking about if they're but to me, as soon as I see that, that's what I think. They're trying to make money, and they're trying to take advantage of somebody. You know what I mean? They're not uh, known for to be a coaching resource, which, in my opinion, to you can't be a coach for anything just because you have knowledge to do it, just because you've done it. You, you can't be a coach. Some people are shitty teachers. Everyone here has gone to school. Everyone here can think of really good teachers. Everyone here can think of really bad teachers. That's what a coach is. Not everyone is cut out to teach people... Uh, lessons and and proper uh, routines and things that it's a different sort of patience and learning how to talk to people and I don't think I'm using the right words to describe it but not certainly not everyone can do it and and I know in particular some of these people I've seen I'm like wow I would hate for that person to tell me what to do not out of some kind of arrogance position but just because i know how that person talks to people and that's not that's not a conducive way to to help someone learn that's not that's wait i was mentioning it today in a different conversation uh, a stream coach can sometimes be considered sort of a leader right that's a leadership role you're trying to to to, to help others get to where they want to be and the um and we had mentioned today the most important part of le of leading anything, leading a group, leading the country, uh, leading sports teams, leading whatever, is to empower those around you. Right? You don't want to lead by um, having everyone empower you, the single source. Now I'm the most powerful. I mean that might be what maybe what our current president does, but um, you don't. You need to have people surrounding you underneath you above you to the side of you that are also empowered to do the same to help everyone else with you you can't do it by yourself no one can do that by yourself um this is why and i it was so in particular we have to talk about um uh, organizations and in, in business and things like that how they have you know a good ceo or a good uh, a, a technical lead or something on a team a good project manager is a good way to relate because that's in my world good project manager for the government won't just direct every single employee on how to do their job they'll put key people in a place and then empower them to make the right decisions to do the right task to hire the right people to get the right resources to get the job done and then all they'll say to that person is here's the job i need you to do here's the amount of money you have to do it and here's the rough time i'm looking for that's it i'm not going to micromanage you to death and tell you exactly how to do your job I want you to be empowered to get the job done yourself. And the reason people do that is because not only does it delegate some responsibility from them, it helps those people that they're empowering grow themselves. And, um, you know, to, um, uh, to sort of become better at their job, you don't want to... Being micromanagement can, like, burn you out pretty terribly. It can cause you to feel super stressed because now you have to worry about every little detail put the right people in place you don't have to worry about that anymore you worry about the high level stuff you other people down here worrying about different things it's I'm kind of on a tangent about organizational structures and business but i think it also applies to coaching you it, there's a there's a certain personality type and a certain leadership quality and a certain sort of respect and you know sometimes charisma comes in play a little bit but a way to talk to people and sort of a like a mutual respect and things that a coach really needs and it can't be fucking every single person that has succeeded that can be a coach that's not the case you know what i mean sometimes succeeding involves luck sometimes succeeding involves um uh, dedicated hard work 
uh, sometimes succeeding involves, I mean, to be fair, stepping on other people to get there. That's how some, that's how people succeed. You can su- be successful like that. It's not the best way to do it, but you can be successful. Um, that doesn't be getting to that threshold of success does not then make you qualify to tell people below you how to be successful because what do those people tell you? Oh yeah. You just do that by stepping on other people because that's how they know. That's how they got there. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's a really touchy sort of subject and it's, it's terrible to think about. Um, and this is why I call it predatory practices because some of those people that aren't qualified will turn around and go, well, look at me. I'm the best one. I'm here. I'm at the top of the mountain. So everyone flock to me, listen to my knowledge and oh yeah, come to my channel and support me and sponsor me and, and donate to me because I'm helping you and then pay me $250 a month for my, for my knowledge. <laughs> it's, it's so ridiculous. I'm sorry. <clears throat> you can easily uh, abuse that power. Yeah, absolutely. But but that also happens in all aspects. Like you hear about that throughout history. Um, how do dictators come to power? They prey on the weak and disillusioned uh, mass of people that will follow them without uh, critical thinking of their actions or what that that person in power is trying to do. That's in history. That's a repetitive um, uh, cycle. Of people that come into power like that um no i think you're explaining it correctly it's not the same type of coaching but in my job there's definitely a difference between people who are good at their jobs and people who can actually become trainers exactly exactly it's because you're good or have knowledge doesn't mean you have the ability to hand it off to someone else that's exactly right and and honestly in all my career the best project managers i've ever seen are the project managers that are super good at delegating tasks to the right people where the task sort of melds well with their strengths. Some people are good at organization. Some people are good under pressure. Some people are good on a, on a super short timeline. Some people are good at long, organized milestones to get to someplace. Some people need to see the big picture. The best managers ever know the people beneath them, know their employees well enough to go, this person is really going to thrive in this type of environment. And I'll save this task for this person because they're super good under the under the wire. We can push that one out. Those are the type of leaders that succeed. Um, but you need to know your people and, and be able to have a certain skill. Uh, I, I relate it to charisma, but I don't think that's necessarily the right word. It's like... Um, you could say being personable is that term. But um, it's more just like knowing people and kind of giving a shit about them enough to, to understand their personality. Um, conference I went to talked about people should have a mentor and a different person for a sponsor. Huh. Mentor to help you sort yourself out and a sponsor to help open doors for you. That's a good one. I like that. <clears throat> Which goes back to our original talk about the difference between a coach and a manager. And this is related to a, a, a circling topic on this show that has been in existence for more than a year now. I've been talking about this and I'll relate it to the rack. And I talked about it last week. The rack that I built was phase A. Oh, my voice is weird. Phase A of a really long-term plan that I have. Um, A stream coach can give you advice based on their experience. Anyone can do that. Uh, A better coach can give you advice based on the great lessons learned and knowledge they've learned from other people as well as themselves the best coach as we said can empower you to succeed in those goals after they've um, uh, sort of gathered all that experience then can learn who you are as a person learn what you need to get to that spot and then can coach you specifically like that those are probably the best coaches <clears throat> sorry I need I'm talking too much can you believe it So, in my opinion, there's a difference between a manager and a coach. Managers can help you do different things, not necessarily give you advice. A manager can help you uh, review things on your channel. And I'm talking specifically about a stream manager, by the way. I'm not talking about a manager in the business world. Different thing. Stream manager, we'll call it. This is someone that could help you organize a schedule, um, put you in contact. And this is one of the parts where... um, 
Okay. Uh, can put you in touch with uh, with different contacts they have in the in the Twitch world and the business world. Uh, they can put you in touch with sponsors, game developers, uh, publishers, things like that. They could um, <clears throat> put you in touch with different assets, different artists, um, music, art, um, you know, uh, website design, uh, extensions, alerts, things in your channel. Uh, they could put you in touch with that stuff. They could. Uh, another aspect could be sort of a social media, a social marketing uh, aspect of the managerial practice, where they could come in and say, "Listen, um, this is what we've seen in terms of uh, feedback statistics on your social media postings." And by the way, there are websites that will do that. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting it, but there's websites that where you can track your. Um, your uh, uh, feedback on your post you can see how many people it's reached it's uh, called social reach or something like that or forgetting the name right now but anyways it's uh oh it's oh, it was right on i just had it impressions on twitter it's called impressions so you can see how many impressions you've made on different people that have seen your tweet retweeted it and then those people have seen it. So you can see your kind of expanse of a social atmosphere um, but those managers can maybe put you in touch with that type of stuff, uh, with the st statistical analysis of your channel, of your social media postings, of your uh, YouTube content, something like that. They can also look at trends. You can have analysts look at trends coming up. They could say, you know, this type of game is hot right now, or this type of tweet using these hashtags is really beneficial. They can narrow down that minute detail where it's like, hey, if you add this, you get the most bang for your buck on a tweet or, or an Instagram post or something like that. Um, <clears throat> The uh, a manager could also be someone that primes posts for you. Uh, this could be someone that uh, says, hey, we found the best results tweeting out you know, every eight hours. Uh, so here's a couple of loaded tweets for you. They queue up something in your name. Now, uh, uh, my friend Avo brought up some really good points in our discussion saying, hey, I don't, uh, what? Oh, my computer just went to sleep. Holy shit, it's been that long since I touched the mouse. <laughs> that scared me. I thought my computer was shutting down. Um, but um, she did bring up a good point where would you really want someone tweeting for you? Because that's not really in your voice. And I get that. I totally understand that. So you would need to trust this person that, that this person knew. And, and I guess they wouldn't necessarily have to tweet for you. They could cue something up that was in your voice and you could tweak it or whatever. Um, but the whole idea is this. In my opinion, the coach's job is to give you advice to, to get to where you want to go. A good coach. Get, give you advice to accomplish your goals. The manager's job is to basically offload. Uh, thank you so much for that raid, Wolfie. How are you today? We were just listening to a bunch of your music earlier. <laughs> How you doing? Avelio. Gotcha. What were you doing? Atlas. How do you like that game? So I see so many people playing and I just can't get into it. Doing pretty good. We're talking about um, coaching versus managing right now. Um, but anyways, the so the manager's job, so so the coach's job is to give you advice to get to your goals you want to get to. The That's the coach's job. The manager's job, in my opinion, is to take away um, the aspects of streaming that don't pertain directly to content creation. And here's what I mean things I said earlier making those business contacts that takes time getting to know developers getting to know publishers um, uh, figuring out what publishers can be at what conference getting in contact with them setting up meetings um, watching news about upcoming opportunities upcoming partnerships that are opening you see all the time you know um, uh, let's use stream gifts uh, stream gifts is a new service where you can get stuff gifted to your channel um, just recently you've seen them open up for more beta partners Something like that. Manager could uh, could alert you to when something like that is happening. Um, manager's job could also be, like we said, to offset social media postings. That takes time during your day. Most, I'll say most streamers, have a full-time job. You have to. You can't make a... We've talked about this a billion times on this show. You can't make a living streaming. Unless you're in the top 15% of streamers in the world, probably. 10%. Depends on what your definition of... Uh, cost of living is but that it's irrelevant we've talked about that several times assuming that you need a full-time job that takes up a lot of time you got a family takes up more time you got a girlfriend to a boyfriend take up more time um in order to stay on top of this stuff and continue your growth you'll it seems like it would be a benefit 
to offset some of the stuff that just eats up time. Not hard to do. Oh, school. Thank you so much, folks. Yeah, a lot of people are in school. Um, and then you have other stuff like holidays, all this stuff. It would be, in my opinion, it seems like it'd be nice if I had someone that could say, you know, keep me up to date on when stuff needs to go out, the emails I need to respond to. Um, the manager could be handling all these emails in the background and then just send you something. Hey, there's something coming up. Do you want to do it? 15th, you fly out to here. You participate in some charity organization. You fly back. That's it. I got all your details. Everything worked out for you. All you got to do is say yes or no. It saves you a lot of time of making those contacts. You have to start making a contact to begin with. These managers may have a um, contacts already in a Rolodex. Drugs to do takes time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of yeah, that's a lot of a lot of drugs to consume. Okay, you don't have time to do all this other business on the side. Discord, that's a big one. How many streamers have I seen post on Twitter and in their own community saying, "Holy shit, guys! I just don't. I am so sorry. I haven't responded in a long time. I haven't been very active. I can't answer all these DMs." That's another thing. What if a managerial service could? sort of keep the conversation going in the discord you know what i mean i mean it's 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 just time it's just time consuming there's a lot of stuff you gotta do to be a broadcaster on twitch look at all this technology i have jesus christ it takes a lot of time um so in my opinion managerial service is there to offset the amount of time it takes to stream and as we've talked about it on this show before and actually a reason why you see this bar right up there That bar is the Masha's Tech Gives Back bar. And the reason why we do 75% donations on this channel, uh, go back into the community and the people that are in need of tech upgrades, is because, uh, and I think it says below someplace, that the most important part of streaming should be you coming up with the interesting things to do on your show. The creative part is something that a managerial service cannot offset. They're not your brain. So people come to your channel to see you and your content and your personality and it would be very easy to pick up on someone else canning these services for you and coming up with content for you. Um, it takes time to develop segments and things. I mean, Jesus Christ, I know. I've, I've had 15 different segments. Remember the reading segment? Remember the sports analysis segment? We've done all that shit. <laughs> um, this is, uh, hey, what's up, Hip? How you doing? I'm like, you bro, may have lost 100 pounds. We can't do that crap off the bat. Uh, seven mile run. What the f Get out of here with all that talk. Um, so there's a this. It, it should be the streamer's main job, the broadcaster's main job, to come up with content for their own channel, and the rest of the stuff should be a supplementary, um, uh, additional content. That this stuff, this infrastructure stuff, the stuff behind the scenes, that could be. A lightened load by someone else helping. Trailer aired a few minutes ago. Okay, I'll find it, Mike. Thank you. Um, he uh, last time we reviewed the Marvel uh, trailer on the show, we'll do the same thing in a little bit. So, uh, we'll go back to the point of this talk. So, in, in my opinion, I believe that a manager delivers a different service than a coach could. A manager may be able to suggest a coaching person for you. They may be a service that a manager could put you uh, in tune with. Uh, um, uh, the right coach uh, to sort of sort out your goals for you. Now, what's this relate to? We've been talking about this this idea for a business that I've had for quite a long time. Um, since last maybe two Novembers ago, I had this idea for a business that was something like that. And there was a tech portion of it. The tech portion of it would be, there's a service called streaming as a service. You guys may have heard me say that before, but that's what this rack was a proof of concept for. That you could pay some fee and stream hardware, software and all this stuff would be yours on sort of a lease basis or something like that. Like it would be delivered to you. You'd use the service. All you do is plug in your monitors and your internet, and click play, and that's the end of it. And you're streaming. And there'd be different tiers of the service, of course. I mean, this shit costs a lot of money. But um, there could be tiers of service and things to, 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 to supply this type of uh, service. 
So this is one portion. The overarching idea of this business, I actually mentioned it to Ash when she was on the show. I said, what do you think about a like an agency? An agent of, of content creators that was specific to online broadcasters that could provide these different services to offload that type of time uh, from content creators which are notorious for having not enough time. That's a common uh, complaint among all content creators is, I don't have enough goddamn time to do everything. They just don't. I'm not enough time. I think I say that once once a day on my show. I have enough time to do this. I have enough time to change command. I have enough time to fix my um, my audio off sync. A lot of stuff. Um, I talked at the beginning of this year about the rack being completed and that being phase A of my plan. This year is now dedicated to phase B of that plan, which is creating this idea of an agency that I had. Um, the agency involves many different aspects that we just spoke about on the show. It involves managerial service, coaching services, technology service, uh, media services, business services, business connection services, uh, opportunity services, um, and sort of a, a financial planning services for streamers, which I think can can get out of hand with some streamers that, that have different goals about what streaming could be and what type of revenue it could be. And here's the part that I was thinking. And I've, I've mentioned this to... I'm, I'm trying to think if I want to talk about it. So it would, it would be a different idea than what you usually see with coaches. You've seen, we spoke about some coaches earlier. We, we've seen someone that was $250 a month for a coaching service. $100 a month for a coaching service. $50 a month for a coaching service. Uh, here's the problem with that, um, with that type of payment and with that type of rate. Here's the problem. What if I just start streaming? I don't have the following. I don't have the income from streaming to support something like that. Ideally, you'd want your streaming uh, output of fees, the, the streaming services you have to pay for, to come out of your streaming revenue. That way it's sort of tied together, and if one fails, you can cancel the other. When you start out, you're not making any kind of revenue. It takes months and months and months to build up to the $100 limit or whatever to break. Thank you, Mike. Um, it takes months to get there. What if you would like a service to get you started, but that scaled down to your level? And maybe you weren't doing the hundred dollars. Maybe you weren't. Maybe you're not up to the thousand dollars a month or something like that. If you think about it, if you were to make a thousand dollars a month just on subs, you're talking about two hundred and fifty. No, two hundred subs. A well, hundred subs gives you two hundred fifty bucks. Four hundred subs. Four hundred subs. Four hundred subs to make a thousand dollars a month. About, I think. Um, thousand dollars a month. If you're going to pay someone two hundred and fifty dollars for a coaching service, one fourth of your four hundred subs goes to a coaching service. Have you lost your goddamn mind? Do you think that all the time you spend on Twitch, one-fourth of that time should go to someone else telling you what to do? What we done it all for the money and no one ever really even cared. All for the money. <laughs> um, so, uh, the idea is that there should be a service or a rate structure that is appropriate and scaling to your level, to the size of your content that you're creating. And I'm not going to talk about the exact structure I have in mind, but it'll be something like that. And it will adjust over time based on that. Sliding fees. And the idea is that um, the business would be incentivized to, to continue to grow the broadcaster. Because not only would that you want to help your client uh, succeed because that's your job is to help them succeed. But it also incentivizes um, the broadcaster as well as the manager to succeed because now we're both getting a, a, a higher revenue share. So it's it's a concept that I've been thinking of. It's, it's certainly nothing new in the world. It has been done many times in different industries. But um, I'm going to have more information on that soon. 
uh, possibly by the end of this week. I am um, putting paperwork in place for it. So we'll have more information soon. Um, I don't want to talk about exact numbers yet, but I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I have it down. Um, anyways, it's an idea that we've been coming up with. And I say we, I mean myself, basically. Um, just, I mean, talking about the financial part of it. There's other people involved with the, with the formulation of the idea. <sighs> Should we watch the Marvel trailer and just completely go sideways on this? I think so. The last time um, a uh, Miss Marvel trailer came out, we watched it live on the show and got some live reactions. Let's do that. I'm going to mute the mic while we do it. Ready? If you haven't seen it yet, this is going to be sweet, I bet. I'm going to mute the mic while it's happening. Just realize you guys can't see it. No one hit Tiny Mata. There you go. At least it's starting to get you guys missed the commercial. Do you feel bad? Again, Miss Marvel trailer. I'm going to mute the mic. Did you have a rough day, Agent Fury? I'm gonna need clarification on this space invasion. Scrolls are infiltrating your planet. Better shapeshifters. Okay, prove you're not a scroll. That's a photon blast. And? A scroll cannot do that. I'm just supposed to take your word for that. We are free, strong, united. You have to let go of the past. I don't remember my past. Control it. I have this power, but I don't know where it came from. I've never seen anything like her. You think you can find others? She's just the beginning. You've come a long way. But you're not as strong as you think. What is this? The S.H.I.E.L.D. logo. Does announcing your identity on clothing help with the covert part of your job? Said the space soldier who was wearing a rubber suit. Get tickets now. Space soldier. Samuel Jackson, you old so-and-so. That was pretty sweet. I think I was more uh, super blown away by the, the first one. I really love this one picture of her. When she like gets all fiery. I don't know anything about Miss Marvel. Yeah, this one. This one's so cool. She's like super flame one. Ah, oh, damn. That's so awesome. Not a huge fan of that suit, that hat, or mask, or whatever it is. That's so awesome. This movie's going to be sweet. I'm excited. I just want more superheroes. Um, anyways, pretty awesome. Okay. What do we have on deck? We got the, the anniversary show coming up February 1st. That's going to be the tentative plan. Five years. The rogue comes and steals all her powers and puts her in a coma. The rogue? <laughs> um, we have the giveaway stuff for that that will be in the discord this week I'm, I want to promise tomorrow but I can't 99% tomorrow Phil Coulson with hair was cool I really like the shield comment at the end about the hat that was pretty funny Samuel L. Jackson is a good dude he's a funny guy Roku from X-Men yeah I know um we talked about all the Elgato garbage that came out today. Disappointing. I think that might be it. Um, what do we have for the rest of the week? Wednesday, show canceled. I need to get something off my chest. I can't tell where this is going. I'm ready, SB. What is it? Please don't tell me that you bought a key light. I might not be able to talk to you anymore. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the sub, SP. <laughs> you scared me legit for a minute there. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. 
Don't tell me she ordered that shit. <laughs> oh man, that was weird timing. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for that reason. <clears throat> I just want to be pro, Mashis. <laughs> we could get you there cheaper than two hundred dollars for one lamp. We could get you there cheaper than. That. Um, there's no show on Wednesday. I have Dart Night. <clears throat> Uh, so there may be an impromptu show on Thursday. I can't completely commit to that yet, but pretty close. Um, there will be a show on Friday. There will probably be a show on Sunday, as we did this week. We're trying to start up a new day because of the shortened streams. We have about an hour left on this show. We're going to switch to a little bit of games. Thank you so much for hanging out for the chat portion. As always, this segment will be up on YouTube soon. And by soon, I mean like 24 hours from now. Just waiting until you go to bed so you don't see it. <laughs> um, let's let's look at some games. I feel like playing some. Last night was pretty fun with Call of Duty, I gotta say. And Breach, but that is no longer active. Unfortunate lie. What dragon is that? That's an awesome little dragon head. I'm um, checking some out real quick and then we'll go to games. <clears throat> I don't know what I want to play tonight. kind of been thinking about dying light lately I'm still happy with dead cells yeah yeah I'm still displeased with them which is unfortunate I feel like I I mean should I give it another go just to make sure that I hate it <laughs> I'm I if anyone missed the show yesterday I was very displeased with the um, uh, with the changes that they put in the dead cells I don't think they're good for the game but, uh, you know, I'm not an expert on that, so it's irrelevant when I think. <clears throat> it's just, they changed the damn mutations, and the old mutations were so freaking good, and now they're terrible. And I'm super displeased with what they've done. Uh, let me see. I have some, uh, okay. 